Three days since the last spaceflight news have flown by in a flash and brought a plethora of interesting events. In this video, we will take a look on Rocket Lab's efforts to recover the first stages of their Electron rockets and their progress thus far. Then, we will cover the remarkable test of the new water system at Starbase. Lastly, we'll stay with SpaceX for the last topic in today's video. The Falcon 9 launch vehicle has delivered 15 more Stallrink second-generation mini-satellites into orbit. On July 18th, a small Electron rocket launched from Mahia Spaceport in New Zealand. The launch from Pad LC-1B had to be delayed by about two hours and occurred at 1.27 Universal Time. On this mission, the company again attempted to land the first stage of the Electron rocket in the water. As the Electron is a launch vehicle of a small class with no fuel to spare, it cannot afford to perform engine ignitions as the Falcon first stages do. Re-entry is therefore very challenging, but the stage succeeded this time. It then deployed an improved lightweight parachute on which it descended into the ocean. A ship was waiting nearby to pick the stage up from the water. The workers quickly rinsed it off and the ship was able to head towards Rocket Lab's production facility. If all goes well, we could see another significant milestone in reusability by the end of the year. Rocket Lab would like to reflight one Rutherford rocket engine from a recovered stage later this year. And what did the Electron rocket actually launch? On board, we would find a total of seven satellites, the most interesting being NASA's four Starling satellites. An important note, do not confuse their name with SpaceX's Starlink communication satellites. Both name differs only by the last letter. The NASA Starling are six U-CubeSats, which means that their bodies are composed of six basic cubes with a 10 centimeter edge. Starlink satellites are designed to test advanced algorithms for controlling satellite swarms. What are satellite swarms, and how are they different from satellite networks, you ask? The answer is simple. If you have any number of satellites in orbit performing a single task, and you have to send instructions to each satellite individually, then it is a satellite network. But with a satellite swarm, you only send the task that the satellites are supposed to perform, and they autonomously divide the command among themselves into individual tasks. In this way, the satellites can work much more efficiently not only in orbit around the Earth, but also in the exploration of other celestial objects. The swarm can collect data efficiently because the group itself decides which member is in the best position for optimal measurements and which member is in turn best placed to send the collected data back to Earth. Together with the four Starlink satellites, Two Lemur-2 satellites were also delivered into orbit. Their mission will be to pick up signals from navigation satellites low over the horizon. These signals are affected by the passage through the atmosphere. Scientists can thus indirectly observe the weather in the atmosphere. The seven satellites launched were complemented by Canada's Telesat LEO-3, which is designed to test new technologies. The first launch of the giant Starship launch vehicle caused extensive damage to its orbital launch pad. To avert a recurrence of such destruction, the launch pad has been reinforced in recent weeks and a deluge system has been constructed atop its foundations, directly beneath the launch table. At first glance, the system resembles a gargantuan shower head pointing upwards. It is supposed to operate in a similar fashion but with much greater pressure and flow. What you just witnessed was not an accident, but the initial tests of the water system beneath the launch table. 
Water released at high pressure through numerous holes in a steel plate is there to confront the inconceivable onslaught of 33 ignited Raptor rocket engines. However, this test which occurred on July 17th is not thought to have been full scale. It is likely then that we will witness an even more spectacular sight when the super heavy Starship launches. Engineers anticipate that this water system, in conjunction with the reinforced foundations, should prevent a repetition of the damage caused by the inaugural launch of the largest rocket in human history. Preparing for a July 19th launch of Falcon 9 on the Starlink 6-15 mission, SpaceX had to cancel the first attempt due to a leak on the second stage. Then, almost an hour later, the countdown was stopped just five seconds prior to liftoff. The following day, however, everything went as planned. The Vandenberg Space Force Base in California was covered in thick fog, but it has no effect whatsoever on the launch. The launch occurred at 4.09 Universal Time, when the rocket successfully launched from the SLC-4E pad. Falcon 9 carried 15 Starlink Generation 2 mini satellites. These satellites, weighing approximately 800 kilograms each, are significantly larger than the 1.5 generation satellites, which were launched in batches of 50 and weighed around 300 kilograms. But still, our regular viewers might have noticed that the second generation mini satellites had previously been launched in groups of 21 or 22. So why there were only 15 satellites on this mission? The answer is provided by this picture of the launch vehicle's flight profile acquired from the live coverage of the mission. Notice that the first stage trajectory is west from the second stage trajectory after their separation. The upper stage performed a so-called dogleg maneuver. That is the launch vehicle had to be launched in a safe direction over the sea and gradually change it along the coast to the desired heading as a direct route would have flown over populated areas. This more challenging trajectory reduced the payload capacity, thus limiting the number of satellites to 15. This was the first time that second generation mini satellites had ever been launched into orbit from California as all prior missions had taken off from Florida. Both halves of the fairing flew on their sixth mission and the Falcon's first stage was used for the tenth time. The fairing descended on parachutes into the water where they were retrieved, while the first stage landed on the Of Course I Still Love You autonomous drone ship, which was situated 660 kilometers from the launch site. Thank you for your attention to today's episode of Spaceflight News. With our videos now being released every three days, you can anticipate the next episode on Sunday, July 23rd. To ensure that you do not miss any episodes, we invite you to subscribe if you have enjoyed our videos.